want to talk? So let's talk. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Talk to Solomon. This is a very special day because we have a very special guy as our guest of honor. Major General Jerry Curry joins us. General, how are you? I don't hear the general. Uh, you don't hear me? We hear you now. Thank you, you for joining us. You're looking terrific. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Uh, it's been raining all day, and uh, you know how it is with grass. You get, you get that rain... Everything turns green and grows. So I stand outside and wait to turn green and grow. Well, that's wonderful. Hey, that's spoke, marvelous. And, uh, spoken like an Army general. There you go. Green, <laughs> green and growing. Green and growing. Uh, by the way, I'm Stan Simon. I'm the host of the show. Chief Steve, the in-studio co-host. Chief Steve is a former police officer, former uh, helicopter pilot in the United States Army, and a current uh, businessman and a uh, loyal uh, American, and I'm proud to call him my friend, and we're glad to have him as our co-host. General. Hey, Steve. I'm sorry. Uh, Steve, uh, I, I, uh, what did you fly in the Army? I flew uh, UH-1 helicopters in the Army National Guard. I served on active duty oh, as really? a... I served okay. As, but I served on active duty as a paratrooper in the 82nd Airborne Division. Yeah, I was a, a paratrooper also, but I was in the 11th Airborne Division. That was back in the olden days. But you know what? Everybody, everybody falls in the same direction. Regardless of rank. <laughs> when you go out of that door, you're absolutely right. <laughs> well, has anyone suggested that our president uh, try that? I mean, because I'd like to see him go down. But that's just a personal opinion. I we wouldn't attach that to anyone else. General, it has yes. now come to light. It has come to the attention of members of the United States Senate, among others, that we did have military assets available uh, within a few hours, three, four hours, that certainly could have been there in time to save some of the people. It's my understanding that Ambassador Stevens uh, was killed in the first hour. I'm not 100% sure of that, but that was my understanding. Your thoughts? Well, uh, you know, I've been up and down the road a lot in these areas, and I've done a lot of this kind of stuff. Uh, I never believed for one second that we didn't have military assets that could be diverted uh, to do the job of rescuing or helping rescue our people. To me, that was a, a given. I believe that from the very beginning, still believe it today. Uh, all this stuff is just a lot of garbage. The answer is uh, your guys are in trouble. You mobilize your forces and you go and get them and you bring them out. And that's it. Let's go a step further. Uh, and then we'll get the chief involved in this conversation. The, 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 the people who were involved in the military, according to reports, were threatened with retaliation or worse if they went public with what they knew. Talk to us about that. Don't understand it. It's never happened in my lifetime. You know, uh, over 34 years I put in the military, uh, never once did I go down this road. I've been cautioned sometimes. That is, my boss would call me and say, now, look, Jerry, if you do this and you go down this road, uh, you're going to have to be prepared to do A, B, C, and D, and it's going to be a difficult road. So I want to warn you, if this is what you want to do, do it, but you're going to pay a price for it, and you need to be ready. That was the kind of guidance I got. That's the kind of guidance I gave my people all the time, and that's the way we, we did it. We, we didn't worry about... Uh, whether or not it made everybody happy who shines shoes in the White House. I think that's what, the, what they have in the White House these days is, is a shoe stand and, uh, so, and somebody very important, uh, you know who that is, uh, sits up there with his shoes and the staff comes by and polishes them. Yeah, and I won't tell you what they use to apply the polish, but you, you probably could guess. Um, I was told that our SEALs that were there, uh, knowing how to operate, were laser painting the enemy positions, assuming that assets would come and, and know where to, to fire, uh, but the assets never came. 
That sounds right. I'm sure that's exactly what happened. Listen, this 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 was a a, 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 a disgusting, disgraceful display. Uh, here, for for one thing, the president should never have left that situation room until this thing was resolved. And the idea of going upstairs and going to bed is crazy. And the chief of staff should have gone up there and shook his bed and rolled him out of it and said, "Sorry, Mr. President." We need you downstairs now. Uh, it's just a rumor, but I understand that uh, Jason was visiting that night. Just, it's just a rumor. Chief? Well, the general can, can confirm what I'm going to say. In, in the United States Army, that if the general tells the private to do what you have to do to go resolve that, the private then goes on the general's authority and takes care of business. He may go to a captain or a colonel and say, hey, the general said for me to do blah, 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 and I need blah, blah, blah. And the colonel knows darn good and well that if he doesn't get it, the general's going to be on his, his butt. And so in this case, I remember Leon Panetta said that the president told him to do what you have to do to keep those people safe. Then for Leon Panetta to say, well, I couldn't order the military in. Yes, you could, buddy, because you have the authority of the president of the United States. You yep. should call those military commanders and say, hey, President told me to take charge of this. I'm ordering you out to go save those people. Go save them right now. That's and exactly frankly, right, they, Chief. And they wanted to save them. They that. fired a major admiral who was going to send assets. And because he was told to stand down, he said, I'm not standing down. Americans are going to die. And they fired him. Yep. That's the kind of White House that we've got going these days, folks. Uh, that's the way they do business. Yeah, it's but, all, it's uh, all. The, the admiral was absolutely right completely. You've got to do whatever it takes to save the lives of your troops. And your troops will find out very quickly whether or not you care about them. And I can tell you right now, they are very uneasy about the fellow who's given them instructions. And that's because it's all politics. Obama's not given orders on a military scale. He's given orders on a political scale. And they will yep. never match up to the military mission. Uh, you're right completely. Well, instead of being the commander-in-chief, he's the campaigner-in-chief. Yes, that's exactly what he heard. And there don't, doesn't seem to be a, a, a coterie of people around him, a group of folks around him uh, who will look him in the eye and say, this is wrong, Mr. President. You don't go down that road. Well, I couldn't agree with you more there. Uh, the people he's picked around him are people that wouldn't pass the security requirements to be a uh, trash remover specialist at a football stadium. Uh, Absolutely. Let me ask you about a survey that was done by, uh, I, I don't know if it was by Reuters, but they reported large majorities in the Muslim world want the Islamic legal and moral code of Sharia as the official law in their countries. Now, suicide bombing was uh, rejected in the study, but it won 40% support in the Palestinian territories, 39% in Afghanistan, 29% Egypt, and 26% in Bangladesh. Uh, three quarters of the response said abortion is wrong, 80% or more rejected homosexuality. Now, I'm reading these numbers because we know we've had a major event take place in this country. Not that America has lost its way, not that uh, our, our approval rating in the world is in the toilet. Not that we are no longer feared by so much as a, a camel jockey, but that we have a six foot eleven pervert who is being lauded by everyone from the president uh, and the first big butt down uh, for being a hero because he says he's a queer. God bless him. May he live long and prosper. Is that whatever they? Something like that. But uh, at any rate, the fact is, that's our focus. That we congratulate this pervert for being a pervert. And his fiance, by the way, says, ha? Huh? Uh, what? Uh, you know, uh, he wasn't responding to me like he was a queer, but it just drives me crazier that we're supposed to be a good country because we accept homosexuality and it's our very accept, not that it's not morally wrong, physically wrong, health-wise wrong, and, and just downright stupid, but we're handing our enemies the, the ammunition with which to recruit people to attack us. Am I right or wrong, General? 
Unfortunately, you're very, very, very right. Uh, all the way. I, I don't understand what, what, what's going on in the minds of the people we've got elected to the House and to the Senate and those who have been appointed to the cabinet positions uh, in the White House. Uh, the, the president wants to go down that road, and he wants to call up these, these, uh, these deviates, and uh, he wants to congratulate them for, for their sexual exploits. Uh, that's, that's his business. He's the boss. He can call anybody he wants and talk to him. But it seems to me we need to have a group of people in the House and in the Senate and in the cabinet who look him straight in the face and say, Mr. President, if you want to go down that road, that's great. But I'm not going down that road. I don't like that road. It's the wrong road to go down. And I am not going to support that policy. And if you want my, I, I had to do this one day, by the way. I'm not just talking, uh, uh, generally speaking. I actually went down with these words. And I finally at the end said, I have to leave and I'm ready to leave now. And? What happened and, when you made that pronouncement? Well, a couple of things happened. One was, uh, and I was a junior. I was the junior general uh, in this particular operation at the time. And uh, the, the boss, the, the three-star, the guy in charge looked, looked at me and he said, Jerry, he said, you just don't understand. You really just don't understand. And if you understood, you, you really wouldn't be raising these objections. And I said, sir, I said, I'm not trying to understand. I'm telling you that I've made a judgment. The judgment is this is the wrong road and it's morally wrong. And I'm not going to go down this road. And I'm going to very quietly, no press conference, I'm going to very quietly retire from the service. And what happened was is that the, there was a two-star standing in the room for this conversation. He got on the phone called the four-star. So my boss is three stars. We've got a four-star me and a two-star in between. He called him on the phone, and he said, explain the situation. And uh, he, he said, uh, tell Curry that I understand. I do not support him. Tell him, though, I need him on active duty. I need him to be here every day for duty, and uh, we will investigate this. Uh, he did just exactly that. I, every morning, I, I was this guy's chief of staff. I had to go in and face him every single morning for about six months. And then, and at the same time, uh, the investigation went on. The, the chief staff in the Army, in fact, came to uh, Europe and investigated part of it. And it went on and on and on. Finally, I got a call one morning on the phone from uh, the chief of staff of the Army uh, down in Heidelberg, the Army, European Army. And he called me up and he said, we have made the decision. The decision is you're right, your boss is wrong. He will be relieved of his command today and uh, he will be retired, and that's what happened. Can you uh, give us a hint what the issue was here? Yeah, the, the issue was that, th that this guy was just, uh, he, he couldn't tell the truth. He didn't know how to do it. And he stood up there in front of the, the officers and the, and the uh, senior NCOs of our organization, our corps, is what it was. He stood up in front of them and made one of these speeches like the president makes, and he was just totally wrong. And I said to him afterwards, I said, you've misled all of those people. And we need to straighten this out. And he would not. Wow. All right. Uh, Chief. General Curry's just described why he was successful and why he's a great American. <laughs> well, I uh, echo that and agree with that. Let's get back to this survey. One, Arabs want Sharia. Not Arabs, Muslims, because not all Muslims are Arabs. Muslims want Sharia. Muslims put their religion before their faith to their country or their allegiance to their country. And Muslims overwhelmingly think abortion is wrong and homosexuality is wrong. Now tell me, we're not positioning ourselves to ask these one and a quarter billion people to think that getting rid of us, breaking us down, eliminating us is, is what their religion uh, demands that they do. Well, we all, we all know that the, the Muslim religion uh, believes that the, the only way that this world will ever become the kind of world that Allah wants it to be is if every single human being on the face of the earth becomes a Muslim. And so that's what they're talking about. That's where they're going. And uh, that's the path uh, that these guys are following. 
And you're absolutely right. The government is secondary to uh, the Islamic religion. Uh, anything that you can think of, is, everything is secondary to it. And the uh, Sharia law, my goodness, you got, you got to be crazy to follow that. All right, well, they, you know, there's some variances in some groups of what they believe Sharia law really means and what the Muslim faith really means. But all I'm saying is the vast majority of Muslims believe three things. One, they believe the Muslim faith is the most important thing in their life. Two, they believe that killing unborn children is wrong. And three, they believe that homosexuality is wrong, even though it's widely practiced in the Muslim world. Let's not say that it's not, because that's the big thing of these rich uh, Muslims, is they, they uh, get kids, uh, young boys, that they have sex with. But it doesn't make any difference. That's what the, the rank and file believe. All right, let's, let's go now with the thought that this president of ours, who has been shown to be feckless and rudderless, and backboneless uh, has now said he's going to give heavier duty weapons, lethal weapons, to the Al Qaeda people trying to take out Assad. That's really what we have is the Sunnis trying to take out. Uh, well, actually, he's uh, not even. Uh, uh, sh what is it? It's not Sharia. It's not uh, Shia. Shia, but he's a third group, a smaller group, but. They support the Shias, and they're supported by the Shias. So my point is, everyone knows that if, if Assad falls, Syria will, will become an Al-Qaeda-run country. What in the hell are we doing? Uh, the same thing we did in Egypt. Uh, Egypt is worse off now than they were before. And uh, we, we got all enthusiastic and uh, uh, loved this Arab Spring business, whatever that is. And so we uh, went for it, helped them, and now we, we've got uh, a worse government in Egypt, one more hostile toward Egypt, toward uh, Israel than they've ever had before. And we're doing that, we're doing that across uh, the Middle East. Our idea is that we will end up with a worse government in, in Syria than they had to begin with and that they have right now. Uh, I don't know why the American people, uh, the American news media, uh, the, the intelligentsia, the, 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 the think tanks, all these study groups. I don't understand why, don't, why, why they don't understand that. You, you go ahead and, and kick out uh, uh, Assad and get rid of him, and then what do you do? You bring in the Arab Brotherhood and, and Sharia law, and it'll be the worst country that uh, you can imagine. Chief? What's interesting, uh, my observation is, is that Obama and his minions they have a soft spot in their heart for these radical Muslims because both sides, both groups hate America and want it destroyed. So the more the Muslims group hates America, the more the left really likes them. Uh, it, but it all, all boils down in this country to what I call a bait and switch. And so the, the, one of the main objectives, the main objective to Obama's uh, domination of the United States and the world is Christianity. It must be destroyed. And so here we have Christians being told by the left that if you're going to be a true Christian, you must accept these non-Christian values. Uh, it's just uh, their, their goal is to destroy Christianity. So if you listen to them, you're going to be destroyed. All right, let's go to the next step in, in the, you know, the domino theory here. We've got uh, known terrorists, terrorists we've been warned about by not once but several times uh, coming to America on the absolutely preposterous concept or no thought that their, their, their safety is in danger, even though they keep going back to where they came from uh, on our dime. Uh, we have now been told that they've gotten over $100,000 worth of benefits from us. Uh, they're living large, not working, uh, and then they end up uh, allegedly, to use legal terms, uh, causing incredible, godless, horrible uh, harm to Americans um, and we see in the process our rights being just trampled on uh, in order to catch them uh, and somehow our government and our uh, authorities, FBI and the like, uh, want to convince us that these guys did it on their own when everyone knows it isn't possible. We know they went to terrorist training areas. We know that they got help. 
We know that they met people. We know that the, the family is involved. Uh, the whole family is a bunch of, uh, of, of dishonest people. Uh, the the uh, sisters, the mom, the dad, the whole bunch of them. Uh, and yet, we don't even have a national interest, I guess is the word, or demand that we get to the bottom of this. Why, General? Uh, Benghazi. Uh, we never got to the bottom of Benghazi either. And that is because the leadership that we now have really doesn't care about the American people, and it doesn't care about our government, and it doesn't care about our Constitution. These folks are determined to take us down some liberal road uh, that's going to end up in total, uh, complete disaster, and we are out here by ourselves having to fight the battle in uh, places like uh, Boston, for example, and it's being done in spite of, not because of the federal government's help and uh, the federal government's support. Chief, well, if we ever see Barack Obama get to the bottom of Benghazi, we're going to see an image of him looking in the mirror. That's what we're going to find. Because that's really where it all comes from. Uh, I love it, Chief. You're right on. What is that that was said, we have met the enemy and they are us? They somebody are us. Said, they, somebody said that. I don't remember who, but... Uh, uh, was, it, was it Peanuts or something? <laughs> whatever. Uh, it was an admiral. Okay. But, but let me add something else to this. Yeah, the, the federal government, our federal government, is the one that is, that is promoting this lone wolf theory. And the reason is, is because if it's a lone wolf, they can't get blamed for any of this. They can't That's be on right. the hook for any of this. But if we remember, our federal government is the same one that said that the returning, our returning veterans, our military heroes are the enemy. They're dangerous and should be uh, watched. They should be put on medicine. They should be taking their guns away. That's the same folks that are now telling us that lone wolf's responsible. It's all a big lie. And we had yep. networks hoping that it was a, you know, a white Christian uh, extremist of some sort that did this. Uh, General, I'm going to say this, and, and then I'll get your comment. And this is really not addressed to you, but you can comment on it. Folks, listen to me, if you choose. If you don't, don't. Just because you're a liberal, just because you're a homosexual, just because you love uh, Muslims, just because you're as far left as you can possibly get. If you think the mad dogs, uh, extremists, Muslims, uh, extremists, communists, whoever, will leave you alone because you love them and you speak up for them and you care for them and you do all the things they want you to do, why the hell do you think they did this in Boston, the most liberal city in America outside of San Francisco? Why do you think that? They look at you as useful idiots. And you're certainly expendable. Ambassador Stevens was our ambassador, so he should have been protected. But he was an out-of-the-closet homosexual in a Muslim country. He was publicly sodomized as they were killing him. We don't talk about that. You remember the Jews? The, the, the play about the Jews who said... The Nazis can't kill us all. They sure the hell try. We'll take a break and we come back. We'll have the general comment. This is Talk to Solomon. Let me ask you a question. Do you like being sick? I have in my hand an incredible product. It's called TR10 Super Colloidal Silver. TR10 stands for a trace to the negative 10th power. The particles in this silver product are six to eight angstroms, six to eight ten billionths of a meter. Now listen to me. Silver has been the magic bullet for all of human existence. The Egyptians used silver instruments. We use silverware. They put silver in your teeth because nothing can grow on silver. Silver will kill anything but liberalism. I'm working on that. This product, you go to cpnlive.com, buy one quart of this product, it will last you for a very long time. Anytime you feel like you've been exposed to something bad, take some of this product, spray it in your mouth, or take a little bit and gargle it, swallow it. 
it will kill any pathogen. The average antibiotic kills 10 to 20 different pathogens. This product will kill 700 plus. Do yourself a favor, do your family a favor, do your doctor a favor, he's tired of seeing you. Get super colloidal silver, go to cpnlive.com, order the product, it's $29.95 plus shipping, I think it's $39.95 delivered any place in America right to your door, it's worth 10 times that. Check it out, if you're not 100% happy, just return it and we'll give you your money back. Hey, my name is Stan Solomon, and you know if I have something to say, I'll say it. And I'll only tell you the truth because I'm a Republican, not a Democrat. Democrats always lie. Republicans only lie half the time. I don't lie at all. This is the fuel mule. It's an extraordinary product that was developed by a friend of mine, an engineer, and it increases the fuel mileage on your vehicle. If you have a combustion engine, this will increase your mileage by 10 to 20 percent. It bolts around your fuel line, you can install it yourself or have your mechanic do it. It is an extraordinary item and it flat works. I've been using it for more than 10 years. It's increased my mileage on every vehicle I put it on. And by the way, it will last forever. You can get rid of your vehicle, just take it off and put it on the next one. Go to cpnlive.com. You'll have more information there. You can order it right there. We absolutely guarantee you'll be satisfied. The Fuel Mule, it's a way to kick down your cost of fuel and kick up your mileage. Don't you love the name? I thought of it. The Fuel Mule. I like to eat. Do you like to eat? We all do. And usually we run to the grocery store, we run to the convenience store, uh, or we have something in the fridge. But power's been out in parts of this country in the last few weeks. Uh, we don't know what's going to come down the pike economically. Smart people are putting in food. Alpine Air Gourmet Reserves is a line of foods that you can put away that will last for a very long time. You know, they say eat what you store and store what you eat. This is great tasting stuff, healthy for you, a full line. You go to our website, cpnlive.com, and click on the button for Alpine Air Gourmet Reserves and see all the different things we have. This is good tasting food. It's reasonably priced. It will last and it's worth its weight in gold if a problem arises. I know you don't think there's going to be anything that goes wrong. Actually, you do. This is smart. This is smart insurance. This is smart preparation. This is smart thinking. You have kids. You have a spouse. You have parents. You have dependents. Uh, you have an appetite. All those things can be addressed by a, a, a frugal but smart investment in Alpine Air Gourmet Reserve. Try them out. You will be tickled to death with the taste of them. You know what? In many cases, people start to eat this, and they think, heck, this tastes better and costs less than what you're going to the grocery store and buy. CPNLive.com. Check it out. Do you like being healthy? I do. In fact, this product, which I've been taking for years now, is absolutely the answer. Now, you may not believe it, but I'm actually 21, plus tax, of course. This product has 146 different healthful nutrients in it. And it's liquid, so it's bioavailable. It tastes great, and it's sugar-free. One ounce of Sonic Life each day will help you to maintain and enhance your health. It's the kind of a gift, well, that you'll thank your mom for, your husband for, your wife for, your kids for. Whoever you give it to, they're going to say thank you. And you are going to enjoy the benefits of having all the vitamins, all the minerals, all the nutrients your body needs in one very reasonably priced product. Just go to cpnlive.com and everything's right there. You'll be able to read all the ingredients. The price is right there, a flat price delivered to your door anywhere in the United States of America. Sonic Life is a gift, a great gift. Give it to yourself. I do.